Good morning. Yeah, today I'm going to talk about my last lecture of the semester, how to analyze in vitro antibacterial effect. So maybe, uh, except he one, you guys don't know anything about the, how you culture the bacteria, but it's relatively similar with the mammalia cell. Yeah, so once you understand how you culture the bacteria, if you want to do this thing, you can do any time. We have a facility to culture the bacteria as well, uh, next to the material room. So, yeah, we are ending of this semester using this biomaterial tissue response. So maybe co-culture thing will be lectured in next semester. So you already, yeah, from the last two weeks, yeah, you study about the immune response of biomaterial. So this is kind of brief introduction of inflammation, I mean, inflammation and immune response. So anyhow, two months later, you will take the exam. So for before that, until that time, you have to study by yourself what is the immune system and how you analyze the immune response using your own biomaterial. And today, we are going to talk about bacteria, fungi, growth curve, and kind of uh, methicillin susceptible steroid aureus, methicillin resistance, SRUs, and then pancomycin resistance, SRUs, called MARSA, BARSA, EMSA. Yeah, I'm not sure about this, but people are uh, told like this pronounce, this MARSA, BARSA. So if I say MARSA and BARSA, you should understand this MARSA versa. And MIC activity and CFU, plaster blue, live and dead, and how to culture them, so you will understand this content. So first, how you culture the bacteria? Yeah, so if you look at ATCC, so some kind of bank, so when you look at the E. coli, let's see, E. coli and ATCC number 225922, that they mentioned the medium, same as the mammalian cell. So if you look at the human MSC in ATCC, they mentioned the specific medium. And for bacteria as well, you can see their specific medium called triptychase soy agar or broth. So the abbreviation of TSB or TSA. So most of the time, they mention two types of the media. One is with agar, the other one is without agar. So when you primary culture, primary culture the bacteria, you should culture them in just without agar media. Yeah, similar with the cell medium. And then if we want to check their colony forming unit, you have to use agar incorporated medium, which can be solidified in room temperature. So just blah blah broth is just liquid medium and then blah blah agar is a solid medium. So you guys can have two different medium for culturing them. And they mentioned temperature 37 degree atmosphere aerobic. So there are three types normally on aerobic, aerobic and facultative, facultative aerobic. Yeah, on aerobic means they don't need any oxygen. Aerobic means they need oxygen. Facultative, facultative means sometimes if they have oxygen, they can consume it. But sometimes they don't have any oxygen. They, they did not consume the oxygen, but they can survive. So three types they have. So you can check their specific characteristic based on Google or other textbook. And then uh, ATCC is the most well-known homepage where you collect, uh, collect and know the information of the bacteria or fungi. But in Korea, we have many uh, microbiome bank. So this normal bacteria bank is, you can refer this website. And if we want to find some drug resistant bacteria, you can find, you can go to this website. 
or other kind of website also you can visit. And then the price is not that much expensive compared to the mammalian sales. Mammalian sales are around $500 in HTC and then around $15 or $100 or $200 in Korea. But bacteria, maybe half of them, mostly. Okay, let's see the video, how you culture the bacteria in a liquid medium. For culturing in liquid media, Erlenmeyer flasks are prepared. The flasks are stoppered with cotton plugs. To keep condensed water away, the plugs are covered with aluminum foil before autoclaving. Color change of the autoclave indicator tape indicates upheating of the autoclave. This also marks the flasks as sterile. For small culture volume, sterile tubes are used. A sterile pipette may be used for transferring sterile media. Sterile flasks are filled with a medium. So this is yeah, liquid medium, yeah, like brown color. This acolam is for sterilization. For inoculation of a single colony in liquid media, colony material is taken and directly transferred to a sterile tube or an Erlenmeyer flask. After cooling, be sure to suspend the colony material properly. Press the loop gently on the glass surface, then move the loop slightly forward and backward in order to get a home. Press the loop to colony material. Here we can collect one colony. Be sure to suspend the colony material properly. And then put it in this Press liquid the medium. on the glass surface. Then move the loop slightly forward and backward in order to get a homogeneous suspension. Samples are then incubated in a laboratory shaker. And shaking them for growing the bacteria. Most laboratory organisms like E. coli or bacillus strains will grow within some hours or overnight. And then you can see the turbidity change. The originally like very light color, but when the bacteria grows, the color, the turbidity is more like this. So you can see they are growing. Yes, so this is a uh, liquid medium to culture the bacteria. Yeah, so after culturing the bacteria, you have to know the bacteria number. So for the mammalian cell, you can count using tripan blue dye, right? And the counting machine, but in bacteria, uh, maybe you can find some machine to count count it, but it's not. It's quite expensive, a little bit expensive, and then not accurate that much. So we have to use the CFU colony forming unit assay for checking the bacteria number. So how you did? So let's say you culture them overnight, so you can see the turbidity and then confirm the bacteria grows, and then you dilute. 10 times in PBS, 10 times PBS, 10 times PBS, and then 10 times 10 time PBS, and then you can collect, yeah, sorry, we are missing one tube, and then you using you are using only one microliter of liquid and then spread in this kind of solid medium. And then incubate them 37 degree you can see this kind of colony. So meaning of the colony is that the single bacteria, they can grow like this kind of uh, colony. Yeah. So 
you can say that this is originally uh, when you spread out, this is one bacteria, but over this 12 hour incubation, the bacteria number increased, and then we can see them like this kind of colony. So this is kind of called serial dilution and poor plate technique. So how you quantify the bacteria number? So if you count this number, like you divide it four, and then number using your marker, one, two, three, four, 20, 30, 25, 40, and then combine them together, and then total number is 142. So the appropriate number for counting the colony is that around 20 to 300. For example, your colony is less than 20, maybe you have to dilute less. But if your colony is too much, you have to dilute more. So the, uh, most of the time, people using this number as to count the colony number. And then this is 142. And then how you dilute? One, two, three, four, and then after four time dilution, you can gather 100 microliter. Okay, so this is five times because we so like this. Uh, 142 multiply 10 to 5 power. Ah, sorry. Okay. So, depending on the people, they uh, count, they is estimate the number by their own methodology. But just I will show you one example. So you dilute one, two, three, four times dilution. So ten four dilution four times, and then original consideration is that this number and then you dilute four times, right? But per 100 microliter. So you can convert to uh, 1.2042, uh, multiply 10 to 6, no, 7 power. Can you guess it? So originally this uh, 142, 10 to, power, 10 to power 4, but Digit up to so 1.42 multiply 10 to 6 power, but this is one microliter. So if you convert to the one ml, the one digit increase, so 10 to 7 power. You have 100 microliter. You have 100 microliter. Spreading. Hyun-sem, how do you calculate it? In fact. 이거 사람마다 다른데 저는 이렇게 네번 다루셨잖아요. 한 번, 두 번, 세 번. 여기 이 티브가 있다고 치고 네번 다루셨네서. 세번한 다음에 아까 그러니까 뿌리고 스프레이팅을 한 거잖아요. 저는 이걸 그러니까 그냥 그러니까 그렇게 원래 오리지널 했는데 나네 번으로 생각했어. 그러니까 한 번, 두 번, 세 번, 네번 하고 여기를 이제 백 백이 났다라고 생각했거든요. 그럼 이게 맞잖아요, 그죠? 그러니까 원래 희연 쌤이 의도한 거는 세번 다이루션 하고 백을 딴 거잖아요. 저는 이제 그냥 네번 다이루션해서 다이루션 하고 백을 땄다. 어, 그러면 이게 되잖아요, 그죠? 음. Yeah. Okay. So actually, this PPT is combined with me and Hyun. So. So anyhow. The, the important thing is that, oh, sorry, I'll correct you later. So anyhow, if you, you know the dilution factor, one, two, three, four times, but you only spread one the microliter, so you also have considered this microliter, but only CFU can be shown as per ml. So if you know this factor, so you can ca calculate it. Now let's see the YouTube, how they, do this coordinate form union assay.
The pore plate technique using serial dilutions is one method for quantifying bacteria in a sample. A dilution is created by measuring a volume or weight of a sample and adding it to a volume of sterile water, thus making the resulting solution less concentrated than the original. When we repeat this process for each new tube, thus making a series of more and more dilute samples, it is called a serial dilution. In this illustration, a series of 1 plus 9, or 1 in 10 dilutions, yields a tenfold serial dilution. When these serial dilutions are combined with agar and incubated, the microbiologist can then make a count of the resulting colonies which can be used to estimate the number of viable bacteria in the original sample. We're going to estimate the number of viable bacteria on alfalfa sprouts. Because the quantity of bacteria on these sprouts is unknown, we'll do a series of dilutions to ensure we are able to accurately estimate that quantity. Let's look now at the calculations involved in making serial dilutions. Each dilution blank contains 9 milliliters of sterile distilled water. 1 milliliter of a liquid sample transferred to 9 milliliters gives 1 milliliter of sample in a total volume of 10 milliliters. 1 over 10 can also be written as 0 0.1, which is equal to 10 to the negative 1. Thus, the dilution of the first tube is 10 to the negative 1. If a solid sample is used instead, one gram of sample is considered the equivalent of one milliliter of a liquid sample. One gram of solid sample transferred to the first nine milliliter dilution blank is also considered a 10 to the negative one dilution. If we transfer one milliliter of the 10 to the negative one dilution to the second nine milliliter dilution blank, that transfer is also a 10 to the negative 1 dilution. But the total dilution in the second tube is now the product of the two dilutions, or 10 to the negative 1 multiplied by 10 to the negative 1. Remember, whenever you multiply two terms with the same base, you add the exponents. So the total dilution in tube 2 is 10 to the negative 2. It's important to note that there are alternate methods for performing a serial dilution other than the 1 milliliter in 9 milliliter scheme. One of the most common alternate dilution schemes uses 99 milliliter dilution bottles. In this case, 1 milliliter in 99 milliliters is a 1 to 100 or 10 to the negative 2 dilution. Let's review how to calculate dilutions using our original one milliliter in nine milliliter dilution scheme. For any single dilution, you will divide the amount transferred by the new total volume of that tube, the sum of that amount transferred and the amount already present in the dilution blank. Don't forget, a single dilution is only the dilution you've just made with the current transfer. Calculating a single dilution does not take into account that the source of that transfer may be already diluted. To calculate the total dilution in any one dilution tube, you must multiply the dilution of the transfer, the single dilution, by the dilution of the previous dilution tube, the tube from which the transferred amount was taken. Now that we know how to calculate dilutions, let's use our serial dilution method to estimate the number of bacteria on sprouts. First, label each blank with the total dilution it would have. Aseptically weigh one gram of sprouts. Using aseptic technique, remove the cap from the first nine milliliter dilution blank, flame the mouth, then use forceps to transfer sprouts to the blank. Flame and recap the tube. This is the 10 to the negative 1 dilution, since we're adding 1 gram of sprouts to 9 milliliters of sterile water. Recall. Okay, from now on, you can take video in your home. Yeah, it's too long. So if you see this video, you can understand how you serial dilute and then how you calculate the 
amount of CFU. Okay, so the other way is that uh, CFU is golden standard, but it takes time. So what can we have another option? So this is com comes from growth curve of bacteria. So you can check the optical density. Normally, optical density at 600 nanometer. And from the obser observance value, you can ca calculate or estimate the growth number and the growth of the bacteria. Because uh, when you remember the previous movie, the bacteria growth turbidity change. The, this turbidity can be measured by this 600 nanometer. So we calculate that 600 nanometer at optical density is 1, is equal to 1 to 10 power of 9 CFU per, per mil. So this is the most of the bacteria, they have this kind of CFU per ml at 600 nanometer. But depending on the bacteria or fungi, maybe a little bit change. So you can check by your hands and your own machine how you, once you calculate uh, this optical density, one is how much of you have it, and then you don't need to uh, do this uh, assay further and further. So let's see the growth curve of bacteria. So first time, if you collect the bacteria from the fridge, minus 80, maybe they are just leg phage, and then when you culture them in 37 degree, their growth, which is called exponential growth phase. Exponential means exponentially. And then after certain hours, they go to stationary phase, which means they maintain their number because the lack of the nutrient. And then over time, the bacteria start to die because the, the nutrient is abs no, absence, but there's more byproduct from bacteria themselves. So they feel toxic and then they turn to be dead. So this is some how they, from the leg phage, expo exposure phage, stage phage, and then death phage. You can see the many live cell and death cell over time, they go down. So this kind of growth curve also can be detected by this optical density using this spectral photometer. So over time, you can see go up and then this is some leg phase, log phase, log phase or exponential phase, and then stationary phase and dead phase. So leg, log or exponential phase, and then in specifically they mentioned declining growth phase, and then endogenous phase and like this. Yeah. So the total amount of food is like this. Originally maximum, but they go down and then finally they all are consumed by bacteria. So OD600 is a type of turbidity measurement. <coughs> so what we have in ITREN, the bacteria, recently Hyun and Eugene yeah, summarized this thing. So Esarius, uh, Marsa, Barsa, we have it. So there are different kinds of Marsa. And the E. coli, we have it. Streptococcus oralis, EF, SM, and AN, AA, this aura related to the dental species, dental origin bacteria. The E. coli SRS, also from dental, or if you use the biomaterial, also people want to look at this E. coli SRS, is the most common bacteria to infect your tissue. And then Candida albicans is, is kind of fungi, so for older patients or older people, people they are easy to infect this kind of candida albicans. Yeah, actually, you have to understand the bacteria or fungi is a little bit different from their species. So if we want to go further, you can study by yourself. Then, yeah, depending on their bacteria and fungi, they are having specific medium, TSP, as I told you, liquid medium, TSA, blah, blah, agar, solid medium. So in case of BHI, we can uh, manually put some agar, so PHA agar, or you can find some PHA agar product in the commercial market. And then fungi also YM or YM agar, yeah. And then depending on their gram positive or negative, they are mentioned like this. 
So yeah, this is an abbreviation of the whole thing. So E. coli SRS, core bacteria pathogen in biomaterial use. Other things, dental bacteria origin, inducing car dental carriers or periodontal disease, CA in biomaterial use, and this is, yeah, Mar MSA, MARSA, VARSA. So for enlarging your understanding, you have to a little bit understand the antibiotics. So antibiotics, yeah, most common antibiotic is from the beta-lactam antibiotics because they contain beta-lactam ring. And then this beta-lactam ring have same mechanism of action by inhibiting the synthesis of bacterial cell walls. So somehow this beta-lactam, they inhibit synthesis of bacterial cell walls. So, but once, one, when certain bacterium become resistant to beta-lactam antibiotics, it becomes resistant to other bacterial antibiotics, of course. So for example, MRSA not only resistant to methicillin, but also other bacterial antibiotics. Cause methicillin also has beta-lactam antibiotics, and beta-lactam ring. So this is methicillin, so you can see beta-lactam ring. So we can say that methicillin is a class of the beta-lactam beta ring antibiotics. Yeah. So methicillin belong to penicillin class among the beta like beta lactam antibiotics, have this link, and then inhibit synthesis of bacteria cell wall. You can see other penicillin class. So penicillin, methicillin, oxacillin, homomacillin is all kind of penicillin class. They they little have different type because other um, molecular structure is different, little bit. But the basic concept is beta-lactam ring, whether they have it or not. So how they inhibit the cell wall synthesis? So originally, yeah, this uh, P PBP, penicillin binding proteins, members of transpeptidase, normally catalyze the cross-link linking of the bacteria cell wall. So once this PBP is bind, and then they can make the cell wall. But this PBP, somehow, they are connect, connect with this penicillin, especially beta-lactam ring. They cannot uh, transfer this uh, amino acid or peptide sequence. And then they cannot no longer to synthesize the cell wall. So this antibiotics can inactivate PBPs by binding to the active side of PBP and they inhibit crossing case between the linear peptidoglycan polymer chains. So this PBP cannot go this cell wall synthesis. So antibiotic can inhibit cell wall synthesis. Yeah, so from now on, we are focusing on the antibiotic a little bit. And then now we focus on how you analyze them. The first, we can use disk diffusion test. So once you, yeah, this is, or once you suspend the bacteria in the sterilized bacteria medium, liquid medium, and then after over a certain time, you spread out in agar plate, and then incubate just three or five minutes, or maximum 15 minutes to evaporate this medium. So if you use 100 microliter, maybe five minutes is enough. And then, let's say if you have your own antibiotic disc, or your own material, they can release antibiotics or ions. You can put, using sterilized forcep, put on the center of the, this disc, uh, this agar plate which was already spread, spread it by the bacteria. And then push. And then over time, so this is some criteria. At least this is kind of distance between the center of the disc and then outer boundary. And then this specimen should be distance over the 24 millimeter, this is recommended. And then what happened? 
so you can see this kind of a zone of inhibition. So bacteria, they should grow when they, when they did not contact the uh, antibiotics or anti anti antibacterial material like this. But when they contact them, they cannot grow. So you can see this kind of clear zone. So we can say this zone of inhibition or clear zone. And you can measure the diameter. And then you can know how strongly they have antibiotic effect. So in case of MARSA, this is a material resistant SRS. From the disk diffusion test, if the zone of inhibition is over 22 milliliter, which means that they are susceptible to this cep uh, 16 one of the beta-lactan antibiotic, or this oxacillin. Ah, sorry, yeah. cep But when they have less than 21 millimeter of zone of inhibition, you can say they have resistance to this antibiotic. But also, if we want to have another methodology to check the uh, whether this, uh, this bacteria have M MRSA characteristic, you can use MIC test. I will show you later. MIC test, uh, just remember, susceptible less than 4 micrograms per mil, but when they have resistance, only over the 8 microgram per ml they need it for inhibiting the growth of the bacteria. In case of oxacillin, 2 and 4. Actually, absolute gold standard to check the MRSA or VRSA is from the PCR, but it takes a long time, so we are preferred to other simple methods like disk diffusion test or MRSA test. So yeah, depending on your uh, species of bacteria, there are acceptable methodologies to check their resistance. In case of VRSA, unfortunately, disk diffusion test cannot be used. Not a reliable method. So I will attach some uh, some this document for your better understanding. Susceptible, intermediate, resistant, no zone of inhibition information, which means not relevant. So in, in case of VRSA, only you can measure the MIC test, except the PCR. So Below 2, susceptible, over 16, resistant. So, yeah, how you culture the bacteria or your material, especially on a particle, your scaffold, or extract from your scaffold? There are two ways shaking, dynamic incubation, or static incubation. Let's imagine shaking. If you culture the cell, normally you put in incubator, which means static. But uh, but the bacteria, normally we culture them in shaking incubation, shaking condition. So just remember, macro dilution, some high amount of the medium, MIC test, a CFU, time period assay, pressable assay, live end assay, they can perform in shaking incubation. So after shaking incubation, you can do this for assay. But this for assay also can be done in static. But only you thing you can do on the static is that disk diffusion test. How you do this disk diffusion test under, under shaking? There's maybe not much difference. Because already a liquid medium evaporated, the bacteria is stuck to the agar plate. And then micro dilution, let's imagine 96 well. 96 well, you cannot shake it. The, the, the media in 96 well, they are yeah, overflowed to the other well. So because of their container issue, micro dilution, small volume cannot be used under static, uh, under shaking. So for shaking, you have to use micro dilution. But the limitation is that you have to use high amount of the, your sample. Let's see one by one about this whole methodology. So the other way, why you choose the shaking methodology Let's imagine all bacteria in ITRAN has a facultative anaerobic, which means that a facultative 
an aerob can grow without with oxygen because they can metabolize energy aerobically with oxygen without oxygen but they prefer to consume the oxygen because the oxygen when they consume they can generate more ATP so the this bacteria gather in this upper side because they are more chance to inter interact with oxygen so static incubation is not suitable for checking antimicrobial property of nanoparticle because in, in static condition your nanoparticle can go down but your bacteria go up there is no interaction so maybe if your nanoparticle can release some ion like silver or antibiotics maybe somehow they can go up but if you if your nanoparticle directly interact with the bacteria to kill them they should physically interact that is why we prefer to this kind of shaking in this manner anyhow we need a cap so when they are shaking in this manner there are more chance to interact the bacteria nanoparticle or your, your, your bacteria and then we can show we can get good result this is your example so we are nanoparticle we culture the bacteria yeah, the Ibican, this is a punk fungi over this concentration and then culture them in static in nice as well and then over time we can check the optical density like this compared to control black little red or green have little, little um, inhibition of the growth okay and then this is some direct nanoparticle treatment with the bacteria with the fungi and then we can use extract I extract the, some cement which incorporate copper and then I use them for checking the antibacterial effect so over time we can check this copper incorporated extract that can show inhibition but over time they are, look similar so you can use extract condition or nanoparticle itself to investigate the antibacterial effect and then bacteria attachment test so the minimally so the best thing is that to inhibit the bacteria growth but the other merit is that to inhibit the bacteria attachment to your material is also a good sign for your, for your material so same way the cell if you have some hard or soft material you can culture the bacteria on the, the surface so like this diameter or height of the material you can prepare and then this kind of 10 to my 10 micro one the micro of 10 to 5 10 to power 5 bacteria and then culture them on top and then after over time check whether your bacteria suspension not overflowed and then after that gently washing your PBS and then you can only remain the bacteria attached under this material and then add the media with pressed blue which can enzymatically investigate the bacteria number or live and staining directly and then you can know how the bacteria are on are growing on your top surface so once you implant your biomaterial so anyhow the when the bacteria attachment is less it's good for you right so this is some minimum method how you investigate the antibacterial effect of your material so you can use any kind of this metal ceramic or polymer or gel even gel to uh, to investigate how much of the bacteria can attach on your biomaterial even scaffold so this uh, golden so now we are talking about the methodology for methodology how you calculate the bacteria on the biomaterial for checking the antibacterial effect so first one is one time point or time killer say it's golden standard time killer analyze measures the change population of microorganism with a specified sampling time after exposure to antimicrobial test time killer analysis can determine the bacteria cider or bacteria static activity of antimicrobial agent sometimes if you check the your antibiotic you can see this is a bacteria static or bacteria cider actually they have some meaning 
The agent is considered bactericidal at a concentration that reduces the original inoculum by more than 10,000 times. 3 log 10 is 10,000 times, 99.9%. Or consider bacteriostatic when the inoculum is reduced by less than 10,000 times. So for, for example, over time, this is your bacteria in, in PBS. They are maintained the bacteria number. But if your antibiotic have antibactericidal, which means kill the bacteria, the number of CFU should be 4, 3, 2, less than 2. This is log scale, so 3 log below is 1,000 times less. So this green things, bactericidal agent, bactericidal material, okay? But among this air range, we can say bacteriostatic means they can inhibit the growth of bacteria somehow. And then this actually control is this black one. Uh, this growth control, actually growth control is this uh, rectangular or triangle is control, less than control, but over their original number, we can see they have little antibacterial effect. So when we say antibacterial material is combining all these things. So you can specify normally we are using this one because your material when they doesn't have antibiotic maybe not much easy to gather this kind of bacteriostatic or bactericidal. So your bacteria, antibacterial material have little bit inhibition of the growth not, not below the original number but we can say that antibacterial effect. But when your material is super good, so they can decrease the cell number below this your original number, and then we can say bacteriostatic or bactericidal, depending how much you kill the bacteria. So yes, simply how you do in, in, in your real experiment, let's say you have bacterial suspension 5 microliter, 100, antimicro agent or extract, 5 microliter, and then combine them in 1 ml, and then final, you know, you know, means that how you, your original CFU number per ml. So you are using 500 microliter, so, uh, but when they combine them, your agent, they came 1 ml, so you have to use two times concentrate bacteria. And then when they combine them, your agent, they can come to this final inoculum. And then shaking them 37 degree, and then at certain time, 2, 4, 6, 24 hour, and then you can dilute as you wish, three times, four times, five times, depending on your CFU number. So normally 10 to 5 power. So when they didn't grow, maybe if you five times dilution, uh, sorry, sorry four times 10 fold dilution, and then when you spread out 100 microliter, you can get five CFU. So depending on how much your original uh, CFU, you, you can determine the how much 10 fold dilution, four times, five times. And then you can estimate, let's say three or four times, uh, for just in case they can grow fast. So you can have two plates, three, three times 10 fold dilution, four times 10 fold dilution, and spread one the microliter, and you can have two plate, two plate, two plate, two plate, two plate. And then you know the CFU, depending on their time, over time. And then you can get the result. So this is some your example. Over time, T1 did this thing. So selenium nanoparticle or AG nanoparticle is your passive control group. If you can see, if you can see control, this white bar is like they are growing up over time. Maybe from initially or, or almost five log ten CFU, but they can grow up to eight, which means one hundred thousand times more growth, right? But your selenium, this right thing, they can go very down. So we can say five, four, three, two, below two, right? So we can say that this nanoparticle have bacterial side effect. They kill the bacteria and then 
CF3 number is decreased more than 3 at the log scale. But this kind of AG, they, they decrease, uh, they compare this control, they decrease. But their original bacterial number is not changed that much. So we can say it's just antibacterial effect. We cannot say bacteria static, yeah, strictly. But sometimes, uh, depending on, on authors, depending on the scientists, they can say this is bacterial static. Actually, the original meaning of bacterial static is that they inhibit the growth. Inhibit the, inhibiting the growth meaning that maintain the cell number, bacterial number. So similar bacterial number, we can generally say that bacterial static. So anyhow, yeah, we can get this kind of result. So yeah, from your this three time dilution and then 10 time dilution again from this one the microliter spreading out. So total four time dilution and then you can convert to this CFP number from original and then you can see how they go down. So this is some kind of very labor consuming assay. So every hour you have to spread out and then you have to prepare the serial dilution E2. And then the other one is that recently I trained we are using this pressed blood assay. This is some kind of similar with CCK. CCK, they did not count the cell number directly. They are using the met metabolic activity of the bacteria to indirectly count the cell number, right? So this pressed blue, luckily, depending on the bacteria number, E. coli or some fungi, depending on their cell number, you can see the linear uh, fluorescence unit or observance. So uh, without CFU colony forming uh, spreading out, we can add this pressed blue, same as CCK, 10% of culture media, and then from their fluorescence activity or observance change, we can assume the bacteria activity, bacteria cell number. So this pressed blue yeah, also can be applied to bacteria or fungi. And then observance excitation, uh, sorry, observance is 570 nanometer observance as a reference 600 nanometer. So you have to substrate the value from 570 to 600 nanometer. It's called reference. Not much change, just a little point zero five or something like no change reference. And then if you use fluorescence, also this first blue can be excited by fluorescence, which is more accurate. You can use this um, excitation, this number, and emission, this number. So this is our result. Depending on time, we don't need to, we just detect. It's at zero point, you add first blue media, like one the microliter bacteria or fungi, 10 micro nanoparticle I added, at the same time, 10 micro the pressed blue I added. And then over time, I check their optical density. 570 nanometer, substrate by 600 nanometer. And then check their growth. This uh, medium only without bacteria like this. But bacteria, red like this. But if I add this uh, scaffold extraction, they can inhibit. Actually, this 0.2% is, is a cell, cell, cell nanoparticle incorporate scaffold. So we culture the bacteria on the top, and then we culture them with the pressed blue, whether this bacteria, this scaffold can inhibit the bacteria attachment on the biomaterial. So we conclude that this biomaterial have inhibition of the bacteria attachment compared to tissue culture plate. This bacteria is BA in tissue culture plate. The bacteria attaching on tissue, attaching on tissue culture plate. The second one is that same as the live and dead cell, we can do live and dead in bacteria and fungi, but little different uh, their component. This live and dead bacteria and fungi both are applied Cyto9 or PI. Cyto9 green fluorescence nuclear axis stain. Red fluorescence nuclear axis stain PI. 
cytokine, they can penetrate to healthy bacterial cell wall or fungal cell wall, the label all bacteria. Those intact or damaged membrane. Yeah, so they can penetrate the intact membrane or damaged membrane and then label the nuclear, nucle nuclear exit or bacteria or fungi. But in contrast, PI penetrate only the bacteria with damaged membrane. And then at the same time, cause induction is cytogreen dye. Because red is replaced by the green. A green is replaced by the red. So we can say green cytonine positive bacteria means all bacteria, whether they are alive or dead. But most mostly strongly from the live bacteria. Red from the dead bacteria. So let's see. Even 0%, you can see a red signal strongly. And then this, you can see red, green, uh, green signal, red, green combined, and red originally. So this, we can say this red is from the dead bacteria only. But sometimes if you see red and green together, we have to count as a dead bacteria. Same as the mammalian cell bacteria and staining. Also, this can be done by done in bacteria and fungi together. But specifically for the fungi yeast, they can the company can provide another yeast specific live and death staining, fun and fun too. It's a little bit fun. So fun and fun too. Let's say fun and fun to die can stain the live metabolic fine. Uh, fungi, orange red or yellow orange, vacuolar structure, like this. Orange red, yellow orange, like that green, this, this one. But when when your when your fungi dead, a member rupture, and then yellow turn to yellow green. Actually, the, this green is signal of the dead, but this. Reddish or some yellow is signal of the life. And then this calco flow white to M2R, cell wall stain as blue. This is blue. Okay? So compared to the normal live and dead, live is red, a little bit red, but dead is green. So this is the beauty of this kit. So red, and sorry, red is live, green is dead live and dead image. So let's say once your once this dye stain your your fungi, let's see originally their this metabolic vacuole color turned to be red. Okay? But when your and then your lives and then but your bacteria your fungi has some dead and then their red color changed to yellow green like green and then after that we can combine we can dye again the uh, the fungi wall as blue and then we can see blue outer and the inside of the red only means that live fungi but when you see some green signal this is some dead fungi this is a dead signal only strongly and then you can see as uh, it's a live signal. So live and dead combined, which means they are dead. So MIC test. Determine the lowest concentration of the antimicrobial agent that inhibit visible growth of the microorganism. So we can use uh, macro dilution using this big tube, micro dilution using this 96 well and round the bottom well. So this is some 13 diameter, one micrometer test tube with screwed caps for sterilizing plugs. And then minimum final volume is one ml. So if you uh, culture the bacteria with nanoparticle, you have to consume a lot of nanoparticle. But the merit of this macro dilution, you can use it for shaking. Yeah. But in micro dilution, the minimum amount is 100 microliter, so you can use very uh, little amount of nanoparticle, 
but you cannot make the shaking. Yeah. So there are pros and cons. Married or in merit. So how you calculate the macro dilution MIC test? The same as before, half half dilution, and then your original concentration of, of bacteria uh, of anti antimicrobial antibiotics is let's say three to three. 32 microgram per mil. You dilute again, 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 and again. So over time, 16 hours later, you can see bacteria growth in here, but no growth here. We can say that this 4 microgram per mil is an MIC. Minimum inhibition, inhibitory concentration of bacteria growth. Okay? So originally, your bacteria number is like this. 10 to 5 multiply 10 to 5 power. And then how you gather this number from the OD value, one is 10 to power 9. You dilute using bacteria of medium, liquid medium, and then dilute this amount. And then from this amount, how your antibiotic inhibit the bacteria growth. And then you can see this kind of yeah, white bacteria. This is some bacteria performed by human. So you can see maybe this is MIC, right? This is little um, little bacteria growth in white area, but this is obvious you can see. So this or this, but but this is more MIC. And among this, maybe similar. This. How about this? From this, maybe this is let's say 32, 16, above 32. All bacteria grows, which means MIC is over the 32. And this one, you can see very obviously a little decrease, and you can see little here, here, right? So here or here, maybe here. You can determine this MIC concentration depending on how the bacteria grows. So from the macro dilution, this is the bacteria growth. Little growth, no growth. So we can say this two. Micromil is a MIC. And then yeah, this micro dilution using 96 well also 100, 100, and incubate them 37 degree. And then you can see when they grow well above this concentration of the antibiotic. But in here, there's no growth. We can say this is the MIC of your antibiotic or your nanoparticle. So depending, if we want to increase the MIC, you can decrease the CFU number. But this, is a, this amount will be recommended in normally. But if you highlight your nanoparticle MIC value, you can decrease like 5 multiply 10 to 3 power. And then do this also. So you can say uh, our nanoparticle MIC value 2 micro per mil under this uh, first or uh, final inoculum CFU number. So this is all positive, this is negative growth. Yeah. This is performed by Hyun. So from the original extract, he dilute two times, two times, two times serially. And then this is so antibiotic. You can see four is uh, MIC, but green cellular is half on half of them. When they dilute, they can start to show MIC value. So from other information for your uh, memorizing, so depending on your penicillin and your species of bacteria, you can see their inhibition zone. And then depending on their diameter, 28 less than resistance, intermittent acceptance. MIC level? 0.12 microgram per mil acceptance resistance over over that value. So you can see many oxazolin, cercus aureus, and many cephalorolin, yeah, vancomycin. Vancomycin, as I told you, no inhibition zone information. Only you can determine based on the MIC level. Yeah, other all information here. Okay. Thank you. Yeah.